Hi, I'm Norm Abram, and welcome to another season of the New Yankee Workshop. We've got an interesting collection this time, including this old-fashioned Victorian umbrella stand. And how about a coffee table made from recycled pallet wood? Over here, an old-fashioned wheelbarrow constructed from oak and incorporating a modern pneumatic tire. Now for the gardener in the family, how about a gardener's workbench with storage for tools up above and some large bins for the potting soil. Now for the child in the family, a nice oak wagon. Another interesting piece was inspired by a Danish collection, a half round table known as a console table. It incorporates curved rails and curved legs. Now let's get started with the project today that everybody can use in their workshop, a rolling shop cabinet. Plenty of storage down below, a large drawer at the top, and it's meant to be used next to the table saw or as a station for many other portable tools. Some have even suggested that maybe it should be used as a microwave cart in the kitchen. I'll show you how to build that next, right here in the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. You know, the most frequently asked question I get about the workshop is what is the most important tool? And I always respond by saying the table saw. One like this, with a good cast iron table and a good rip fence. One that'll stay parallel to the blade, giving you nice, true cuts. Now, if you buy anything any smaller than this, you might be a little bit disappointed, especially when you're trying to handle big sheets of plywood to build cabinets. Now, as good as this saw is out of the box from the factory, you can make it even more versatile by building some accessories, like this roll-around shop cabinet. Now, a lot of thought went into designing this. First of all, the casters, make it easy to move into position. And the height of the top is even with the saw. Now the choice of the laminate was not an accident. It was from experience, from accessories that we have on our shop saw. This laminate I found is very durable and because it's slippery, almost like ice, makes it easy to push panels through. Now the edges of the top are oak so that they're durable. And I made sure I allowed the top to overhang the cabinet. And that's so that I would be able to use clamps like this and get a good bite to hold down maybe a router table or a surface planer. The base of the cabinet is made out of birch plywood, which is relatively inexpensive, pretty durable, and finishes up nicely. Now, you know how most drawers, they only open out about two-thirds of the way, and you're in there searching around trying to find something that got way in the back. I found some full extension draw slides. These devices right here on the side. It lets it come out all the way, and they're strong. They'll hold about 100 pounds of weight. Now for the doors, I didn't want any hardware to show to hang them. And I wanted them to be strong, so I chose these European hinges. And they're strong because this part of the hinge is mortised right into the door. Now down below, if you have a similar problem, if you have a fixed shelf, you never can find anything that's way in the back. So I got full extension shelf slides, and I put a band around the shelf to keep things from falling off. Now down at the bottom, there's four swivel casters. They have a locking device to keep the cabinet from moving around as you use it. Now if you'd like to build an exact copy of today's project, a measure drawing and a materials list is available. And you'll hear more about that before this program ends. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now here's some of the plywood that I picked up at my plywood outlet. And they offer a couple nice services. One is that I don't have to buy full sheets, which is especially good on a project like this because I really need one and one-third sheets. 
The other thing is that they offer a free cutting service. So I had them cut me some panels a little bit larger than what I need, and I'm going to true up all the edges using my table saw. Now, it's very important to use a good blade when you're cutting veneers. It should be one that's designed for cutting veneer plywood. And carbide tips, and notice how many teeth. In this case, 60. And what that'll do is minimize any chipping of the veneer. So now I'm ready to size the panels. The next operation is to do some dadoing. You need a dado along the top of all the cabinet sides. And that's to receive these corner blocks. I suppose you could just nail them in place, but by sitting them in a dado, you get a bigger glue surface and just a stronger block. Because this block reinforces the top of the cabinet and gives me a place to fasten the countertop. I also need a dado that runs down along the inside of the side panels into which the back will fit. And there's one more set of dados down at the bottom of the side and back panels into which the fixed shelf will fit. Okay, I'm going to dry assemble a couple of the pieces of the cabinet to show you a detail here. Now, all the edges of the veneer plywood that show, I'm going to cover with this thin birch veneer. I'm going to put a piece here, and I'm actually going to put a piece here to cover up the dado that I don't want to see. But I'm afraid that if I don't fill that dado, this veneer is too thin and not strong enough. So I'm going to fill the void with some little pine fillers and just use some hot glue to hold them in place. Well, now it's time to put some veneer on the edges that are going to show. And I've used a couple different methods over the years. One is to just buy regular veneer and apply contact cement to the edge of the panel and to the back of the veneer and just glue it on and trim it off. A few years ago, they started coming out with veneer that already had glue on the back side. And it was activated by heat. So you could just lay it over the edge, take an ordinary household iron, and just iron it on. The latest thing is this edge banding tool. And these really came about due to the fact that shops would want to produce a lot of cabinets and edges at one time. Just a roll of veneer and this little heat gun, which blows hot air onto the glue surface, heats it up so that it gets melted. And you bring out the wood onto the roller and just roll it along the edge. It works great. Now you want to make sure you keep even pressure against the roller and you move at the same rate of speed. That takes a little practice because if you go too fast it won't stick right and if you go too slow it'll overheat. Now when you get about two and a half inches from the end you just strike this tool right here which is just a cutter and it shears off the veneer. You finish it off. Okay, now I'm ready to trim the veneer. And you'll notice that the veneer is a little wider than the panel, and that's really just to give you a little bit of a fudge factor so you can get it nice and even. Now I found that the best way to trim this veneer is to use a router. And I've equipped my router with a straight cutting bit with a little ball bearing which guides along the side of the piece. Now the standard procedure for using a router is to move it against the rotation of the bit. And really that's primarily for safety. But when you're trying to trim a very thin veneer like this, safety really isn't a, isn't a factor. It's chipping. And in this case, you want to move the router with the rotation of the bit. Now to make sure that everything is absolutely even, a quick run over the edge with the sander, and that takes care of it. Well, now I'm ready for a little assembly, a little bit of glue in the dados. 
And then when you're working with veneer plywood, it's also a good idea to put a little bit of glue right on the edge of the panel that's going to fit into the dado. Because the veneer tends to absorb the glue quickly. And I'm going to pre-drill for a screw. Now I counterboard the hole a little bit. I'm going to plug that with a little plug later. Now I'll just use an inch and a quarter screw. Pull it all together. OK, I'm ready for the other side. And any glue that might squeeze out as I'm assembling it, I want to make sure I clean it up as quickly as possible, just with a damp sponge. Otherwise, the surface won't take the finish very well. Now this top rail gets held in place with a little bit of glue and some four penny nails. Now for the bottom rail, the same thing, a little glue and some four penny finish nails. Now for the corner blocks, a little bit of glue. They simply get slipped into the dados and I'll fasten them with some one inch brads right down through the top corner. Now this center rail is pine, and that's because you don't really see it. It's hidden behind the draw front and the doors. And I'm using some screws to fasten it because I don't have any corner blocks to give it strength. Now remember those holes I drilled for the screws? Now's the time that I think I'll fill them in. A little bit of glue in the hole itself. I use my brush to get a little to put on the plug. I picked up these birch plugs at my woodworking supply store and they're tapered a little bit so when you drive them into the hole they fit nice and snug. And I'm in no hurry to sand them off quite yet. The casters are held in place with four carriage bolts. And I've just started a little bit of a hole by holding the caster in place as a guide. And now I'll finish drilling it through the bottom. Okay, now I'll just put a carriage bolt through, give it a tap so it won't spin, and bolt the caster in place. using my belt sander to remove a majority of the doll that's sticking up above the side of the cabinet. Then I'll sand everything smooth with my finishing sander. And that should do it for today. Tomorrow, we'll finish it up. Well, good morning. I've been waiting for you. I want to show you the parts that I've been cutting for the draw. This is for the back. These two pieces are the sides, and this large piece is for the bottom. And they're all half-inch AC plywood. Now, clamped in the bench vise is another piece of birch for the draw front that I've edged. And I'm getting ready to cut a dovetail joint. I'll show you what I mean. 
This is a different method of joining a draw front to a side. It's a sliding dovetail. The side slides in through the joint, really making it secure. Now to cut that joint, the first thing that I have to do is lay out the center of the dovetail cut. And I also put an indicator mark here. I don't want to go all the way through and show the dovetail at the top of the draw. Over here is a layout line, an offset, that I'm going to set this clamp on and use it as a guide for my router. Now the router is set up with a half inch dovetailing bit. And the key here is to hold the router tight to the back of the draw front and against the guide. Move it slowly in, watching through the base of the router and stopping right at that indicator mark. Now I gotta be careful because if I pull the router out while it's running, I'm gonna ruin the joint because it's tapered, the bit is tapered. I just want to move it in slowly, shut it off, and push it back out again. I'm going to need your prayers. the same router bit that I cut the socket with in my router table. And by carefully adjusting the rip fence, I've made this sample to see how it's going to fit. Let's check it out. Just snug, that's what I want. Now I can run the sides through. Back here at the table saw, I've reinstalled my stacked dado head cutter, and I've set it up for a half inch in width, and made a groove along the back edge of the side where the back will fit into it. Well, that takes care of the groove for the bottom of the draw to fit into. Now to make the groove in the draw front, which is going to receive the bottom, I can't do it on my table saw because it'll show through the ends. But I can use my portable router, which I've equipped with a half inch straight bit and a guide fence. I'm just going to drop it in near one of the dovetail sockets and run to the other one. The draw goes together with a little bit of carpenter's glue. Let me just slide this joint together. And if it needs a little help at the end, a block of wood and a hammer will do the job. The back of the draw gets glued and nailed into place. Now the bottom of the draw, which is not glued to the sides in front, just nailed along the back. Installing the draw slides is just a matter of following the manufacturer's instructions. Some screws into the draw side and some into the case. Let's see how it fits. Slip it together. Good. Now let's put the doors on. Now the doors, more edge banded plywood, need two 35 millimeter diameter holes for the hinges.
Now for the hardware itself. The manufacturer of the hinge will sell you this little template, which makes it easier to locate the hinge on the case. That's all there is to that. Installing the doors is a snap. The top of the cabinet is made from three-quarter inch high-density particle board. There's two by fours around the bottom edge to give it some thickness, and it's all banded in oak. Now, I've already cut the particle board to size and the two by fours that go underneath it. And I'm just going to use a little bit of glue and some screws to fasten the two bys. Now the oak banding that goes around the countertop is mitered at the corners. And that's best done here at my power miter box, which I've set at 45 degrees. I like to secure the oak band to the counter blank with a little bit of glue. And what I'm going to do first is nail the corners together with some brads. Then I'll secure the rest of the band with some screws. The high pressure laminate for the top is applied to the substrate using a contact cement. We'll put a little bit out on the piece, roll it on each piece, and when it's dry, we'll carefully attach them together. Now see, that's just dry. Now you only get one shot at this. This is contact cement. Once it touches, that's it. So I've cut the piece a little oversized. And get it lined up on the edge here and drop it down. Now I'm just going to take this J roller and bond the two surfaces together. I'm using the same router bit that I trimmed the wood veneer with a little bit earlier. One final detail for the top. You'll notice that I chamfered the edges all the way around. And to do that, I just set my router up with a chamfering bit. I'm going to secure the top to the base with four two-inch screws through those corner blocks we put in earlier. These cleats will hold the hardware for the sliding shelf. Okay, now we can build the tray. Using the table saw, I've made this rabbit, which will receive the bottom of the tray. Just as with the edges on the countertop, I've mitered all the corners over at the power miter box, and now I'm attaching the edges with glue and some one-inch brads.
Now, before I install the shelf, I think I'll give everything a coat of sanding sealer. This is a water-based sanding sealer. And it's a good choice for a first coat because it'll seal the pores in both the hardwood and the softwood. I'm going to coat everything inside and out. It should dry in about 30 minutes or so. Then I'll take a look at it and maybe I'll put one more final coat of a good hard polyurethane to really protect it. Norm Abram is the author of the book, The New Yankee Workshop, which is available in bookstores and libraries nationwide. <laughs>